underground uh, emergency. Welcome I've, everyone to Raw Underground. <laughs> I've called everybody to the Cow Underground for an emergency session. I told Skylar Aston, who was with me, pitch Mr. Perfect. Uh, uh, making his, his triumphant return to the podcast via Zoom. And uh, I watched Payback last night, and I was like, I know we're recording the podcast tomorrow, but I got to get I gotta get on the horn and, and discuss Payback, which I would think, I would like to say that I think Payback was a more consequential pay-per-view than SummerSlam in a way. I think in many ways. Uh, I think uh, it was almost a continuation. It was the epilogue. It was like, you know, SummerSlam was like a pretty good show because it had the production and we got to really see the Thunderdome. Right. We got the vague Roman ending, but now we actually, you know, that's like, now it's heating up. Then we get to see the fallout and right. now we can actually see him in full heel mode to which I was very hopeful, excited. And I guess I'd say a little disappointed now in hindsight. Yeah. So, he, okay. So let's, so, okay. Because I've never had so many conflicted – I mean, I'm sure I have. But I like, to, I like to block out all my wrestling memories and be like, no, this is the moment. And that's what wrestling's all about, kayfabing the moment, right? But, like, the moment – like, this Roman – this Roman heel uh, victory, this heel moment and the way it all went down, I was very conflicted about in the moment. I had all kinds of mix of emotions. Uh, yeah. And I still don't even 100% know where I land on it because – so if you didn't see it, I'm sure you have. If you're listening to this, you saw what happened. But essentially, they're pushing – Roman Reigns won the Universal Championship, his first match back, right? Mm -hmm. um, which you and I both predicted. Sure. <laughs> um, you predicted, what, 9 out of 10 of the matches last night? Yeah, I was only wrong on the Keith Lee, Randy Orton thing, to which I was actually misinformed. I misinformed. thought Keith Lee got a, a clean win on the main roster. I didn't realize he hadn't. So, of course, he's going to pin Randy, which that's a pretty clear push right there. You uh, would have got it totally correct if you had yeah. that information correct. But uh, hate, Hated the uh, two-tone gear. Uh, black green, the black green gear was terrible, I thought. Yeah, for, Keith Lee. They've made Keith, Keith Lee, who, by the way, in a, in a weird way – and already, I was like, we're only going to talk about the Roman thing. We're already yeah, going yeah, to Keith. Know, know, this know, is know, what I happens. Know, I know, but I, know. I will say this. Keith looked great, but also terrible. Like, looked great in the sense of standing next to Randy Orton. You're like, this guy belongs on the main roster. No question. Yeah, in every way, yeah. Uh, he like You're like, oh, wow. This guy looks like he can legitimately beat the shit out of Randy Orton, which is very cool and rare. Uh, yeah. And then, in fact, in fact, uh, I think Shoemaker actually calls it the Randy Orton test. How do you right. look from NXT next to Randy Orton? And he was literally next to Randy Orton in his debut. Right. That's a great Shoemaker call. Shoemaker says you got to put the guy next to Randy Orton. Yeah. Now, uh, which is it's not always the case because, like, the first time I saw AJ next to Randy Orton, I was like, wow, this guy shouldn't even be in WWE. And then yeah, I was he doesn't waiting. even. Exactly. <laughs> he, he didn't even really look that phenomenal. Not that phenomenal. Uh, okay. But but Keith then Keith Vince is him wearing that girdle and two tone gear. You're right, it looked awful. It's, uh, it's so many things. In fact, I mean, there's so many times where we're like, God, this guy doesn't have anything going on, and he's so right. generic. Keith Lee had like so many things. Honestly, like it, it looked like two separate pieces of gear on his top and bottom. Like it was yeah. strange. I think yeah. that's what it was. It was, yeah. and also on Monday Night Raw, he wore like baggy shorts. He wore kind of like high Mai Tai shorts, like, you right. know? And, but then this time he went back to the tights. tights. He even did the Bask in My Glory on the entrance theme, but didn't go to the full NXT entrance theme, but they had to at least put the drop in to get the pop. Right. Uh, as, so, so you know that they're listening to the audience and they're adapting as they do, but I think that, you know, it's just not, uh, uh, it's not fully realized. And actually to bring this back to the Roman thing, which is the point of this whole conversation. That's right. This is the I, think, underground. I think that, yeah, where we, you know, discuss some other things we like. Yeah. Uh, very little rules. And frankly, some things that we want to see, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> frankly, some other things I'd like to see. And frankly, uh, some things I'd like to see more of personally <laughs> myself. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. wasn't supposed to say that on camera apparently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to bring it back to Roman, uh, I think that like he's fully not in his bag as a heel and I wanted to, I, I, obviously it's difficult, it's the right. very beginning. Um, I'm not like here to shit on Roman. I love Roman, I'm very excited about this heel run. I was just really excited about a full reveal I was ready for the entrance. Right. I was ready for gear. I don't want him wrestling in a t-shirt. You know how we feel about that. Um, wouldn't have even minded, even though like I would prefer no tank, but if it was like some sort of a black tank with a gold chain, like I can, I can at least reason with that. I also did not like the whole contract caveat. I think it was money in the bank, a Jace. Right. I think it was a like cash in a Jace and a baby face cash in a Jace at that. I think that it was like, why leave Paul Heyman at the ramp? That's a very baby face thing to do. Right. Um, it didn't set him up for a bad guy. He wasn't a bad, bad guy. Sure, chair shots, heel move. Love to see it. Love to see him talking. We love to see it. We love to see it. We love to see him talking. Roman Reigns is always here. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, Sammy Guevara. But here's the deal. Like, I, I, I think that – you hit on a lot of stuff, so let's break it down because there's so, – and this is actually what I would say is like a plus to this whole Reigns coming back. If you really think about it, we saw Reigns at SummerSlam. We saw a quick shot of him on SmackDown, and then this was his his big debut, and yeah. there's been so many facets to it, and it's gotten people talking, right? Yeah. So if you want to go like that, which, by the way, is a big thing in wrestling that I think is a flawed argument when they're like – Hey, you're talking about it, then it's good, which I think is bullshit. There, that's like, just I, like that's Vince McMahon's razor right there. That's how right. he. That's what he he likes to say that rivalries and you know titles and his terms. Right, because I I, I I think that we've seen people who sometimes people are talking about it, they hate it so much, and people stop watching. The numbers exactly. are down, right? So, right. like, let's say I don't know, well, does Roman Reigns give the numbers a boost? Who really cares? I just want to break down this whole thing. So, Roman came back as a heel, which I think we all agree is a positive, right? Like, yeah. we've been wanting to see it with John Cena. They never did it. This feels like the perfect time to pull the trigger on it. Let's try it. We sh Roman doesn't need to get that Cena treatment when he has to stay pure. No. It wasn't really ever really working. I mean, he's headlined four or five WrestleManias and they're just it's never different, Yeah, worked. they're different characters too. Like Roman's a little edgier. He's got a little, he's a big dog. Like he kind of lends himself more to heel work, which right. John Cena is truly became a Wheaties box. And, for, and rightfully so. If you watch kids, you watch John Cena through the lens of kids, it's a different game. You're like, right. I, get, I get why he's, I get it. We, we have all gotten it. I think in like 2015 or 16, somewhere around there, we're like, Cena's dope. He's great. He transcends the sport. He is yeah. a star. He was great in blockers. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. And, yeah. and also, like, you know, when it comes down to it, he's done the most uh, make-a-wishes of anyone ever. Like, exactly. you, uh, uh, you, you cannot – the hustle, loyalty, respect seems to be, like, a moniker he actually lives his life by. You yeah. can't really argue with the classic Americana Cena – uh, 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 vibe. It's just true. Yeah. It's real. In true, yeah. In true name drop profession, I must mention, I had a dinner, a very intimate dinner with John Cena. And I, I think could that, say, yeah, I, I could vouch for this. I've seen the footage. Yeah. He lives the gimmick. The guy lives the gimmick. He's a good dude. Uh, almost robotic, but like, you know, but, but measured, I'd say measured. Right. And not, and not, I mean, okay. So we're saying, and, and not that Roman, because Roman is also like a, seems to be a very good guy, right? Exactly. Anyone, right. He seems to be, and actually, weirdly, Reigns, when you see interviews with him, and you, uh, he seems to be like cool, pretty like cool and funny. Yeah. Like I yeah. don't know where why his charisma. And I got I took some shit from one listener. I don't know, acting like a lot of people because I said he has no charisma. I mean, like on mic, in ring charisma. Like he doesn't. He, he it's it's very stiff. And for yeah. years, he's not loosened up on the microphone. You know, yeah. Roman Reigns, the character has like a couple like couple bad guy bad bad like badass phrases right. like yes sir and like you know there's like some slang in there which kind of makes him edgy but no right. i think mo most likely he's been kind of boring so i was really hoping that he came out um almost like the rock did after his pec surgery like right. i wanted the full package full entrance i don't know if i wanted a new theme definitely no vest Right. And to walk out with Heyman, maybe have Heyman come over the loudspeaker and announce him. I really wanted the, I wanted it. And I, and so the booking obviously with this right. contract caveat, 
uh, we didn't get that. It was like Brock. It was a very, it was very Brock Lesnar booking. Like he yeah, might, so, you know. right. And I, let's break it down piece by piece. Cause the, so the first thing let's break down is the fact that this contract angle, right? Sure. So he essentially joined this match. Um, here, here's, let's take it from a truly watching it perspective. I yeah. was watching the match, the bell rung and it was Strowman and fiend beating each other up. And I was confused. I, I was upset. Right. Did you feel, Oh, you were upset. What, what were you feeling? I just was, I was actually on the Facebook chat where we talk about right. stuff this thing until four in the morning under. Oh, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was, I was just so, I was like, Oh I was basically counting down like three, to like you we're gonna get the entrance and i could tell already when they started doing the backstage segments of you know is he gonna sign the contract and when paul Heyman's like oh he will he would definitely will in that earnest way right i was like he's not and so right. that's how the match is probably gonna begin and i'm just like i just saw this at SummerSlam with braun and bray um right. Like, if I want to see that more, I, they should actually pay off the Alexa thing or at least continue or explain what she is, how she's involved. Right. Um, so I was just left with them wrestling. Uh, right. Waiting for Roman. Just like right. anticipation was killing me. I guess I don't mind the slow play on the Alexa thing, but I do think, like, just the, co the just in terms of the actual contract element, yes, they did do a nice job of letting us know, like, is he going to sign this contract? Is he going to sign the contract? But... That doesn't mean you sign it and you can join a match mid match. That's like, not how contracts work. Right. Like, like that's what I'm saying. And like also if you go back to Monday, we saw Vince uh Friday, and Vince's deal was he had Pierce. He's like, Hey, I need you to go around. I need these contracts signed tonight. Right. right. So he didn't sign it that night, which was unclear to us. So then it like contract in my mind, that's like the reason Vince needed it to be signed that night is because it expires at the end of the night. We got to set this card. Exactly. So why wouldn't any wrestler from now on just be like, I'm not going to sign until mid-match for right. a triple threat? Now, if that's a precedent we want to set, if I had faith that they, they Vince comes out tonight and talks about closing that loophole in these contracts and, right, and, right. and, and Heyman, wow, Heyman really is a mastermind. He really found this loophole for Roman and he's already his advocate. Then I would love that. But my, sure. my problem is that the writing is just sloppy, lazy, and frankly insulting to us who take it really seriously. Right. right. It, was a now, it was a breach of the world. It was a breach of the rules for right. sure. Right. That being said, everyone knows how much I love a wrestler joining mid-match. Like, no, God, it got me back into wrestling. <laughs> right. Actually, like, the Rollins joining mid-match was awesome, and, and that was kind of unprecedented because we'd never seen a cash-in mid-match. But if you remember, Lillian Garcia got on the microphone and at WrestleMania and was like, he's cashing his money back, his money in the bank, which means contractually. Yes, right. yeah, right. But we also kind of know that, like, the money in the bank contract's a little ominous. Like, we, it's in that yeah. case. We don't really see it, you know? Right. Right, right. And it is. We all accept that the money in the bank, the reason it works is like it is the wild card of wrestling. Yeah, it is. Look, it is cool because it, it's, it's, it's like it's money in the bank of Jace, which is what I said. So it's like it's very wrestling right. post 2006 or whenever they introduced it to have something like this. But like have it be floating for more than just like the pay-per-view and it was very unclear and we 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 joke and laugh and it kind of builds the anticipation when they milk the cashing in and the ref like not understanding what's happening and then right. the announcer coming on to and you're like come on come on come on like let's go they're gonna wake up we didn't really get that feeling it was um and and i'm hoping especially since um paul is involved that like that uh, they will, uh, Levesque, no, I'm kidding. Uh, since Heyman yeah. is involved and Levesque, that yeah, someone you idolize. Yeah, you know, uh, and someone you look up to. And then, so like, I'm hoping that uh, they buy it back. I, I am, I am hoping that it becomes an argument. It would actually be funny to watch right. Heyman like Jew his way out of this thing with McMahon. Oh, and, like, you know what I mean? Ab ab absolutely and by the way we're for the record we're both jewish men uh -huh. uh, so we're allowed to use jew uh, as a verb uh but uh no more mr nice jew yeah but uh i i do think that yeah i think that, that would be awesome that's my problem with wb is that actually what went down last night was a fucking blast but yeah. the problem is that it doesn't they don't lay a foundation to set 
these things up properly. So actually, yeah. the surprise of them just comes from a, a what? Okay, fine place. As opposed right. to like, wow, that was really earned and awesome. Like every show, like why I say, which I think wrestling is perfectly capable of with more sophisticated, detailed writing, which they have the resources to do. Yeah. See, now my, I, my ideal was just like, I assume as SmackDown ends and Paul Heyman goes, believe that it's like right. we were in the match. They were advertised in the match. Like if I thought that okay, was the signing. Exactly. I'm sure like they did it off camera, like, or right after uh, the copyright comes up. I think like in McMahon's world, like if they're, if he's able to advertise it the day of and tweet about it that day, it's, it's a done deal. And so, like, the right. fact that it was an open thing that we didn't know about till, you know, the preview show and even throughout the, the curtain jerker matches, you know, like, what's, you know, what, what's actually going on here, I think, was, like, what, what I was kind of concerned with. And if they really wanted to go into that, what if you have McMahon uh, halfway through the show, you know, standing in their way being like, hey, buddy, actually, you didn't sign it on Friday. You can enter the match. That's ah, a little baby face booking there. No, I just still. think that the way they did it is totally fine if tonight they acknowledge that, yeah. that, 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 like you said, like that's the way to do it. That, and then I think it's really cool. Now, then I think it's if they acknowledge it. I, my problem is that they don't care to do that stuff. So that's always my problem with WWE booking. Uh, and it's partially what I look to in AEW where sometimes they pay – close attention to some of those details that I dig. Sometimes I don't also. Um, but uh, 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 um, in terms of Roman, in, in terms of Roman joining the match, okay, then his, the way he played it, yes. So I knew he was, I won actually the tiebreaker bet for this. Our tiebreaker was would he come down in a shirt because I knew since uh -huh. he's a heel, if he comes down with no shirt, there's a couple of problems there, which is... He can't keep up the diet he had during this break. Right, right, right. Right? He's not going to be able to keep that. So then he's really setting himself up for failure with the vest situation. I mean, so, you don't think that he could keep it up? I mean, what's to say that – I mean, I want to – he's got – look, he's got new teeth. This is when The Rock became The Rock. I mean, right. it's happening way later in Roman's career, but I'm hopeful that it's – it's that guy that comes out in a silk and he, I don't think he's going to come out in a silk Versace shirt, but no. you know what I mean? there, like swagger. Like, yeah, he got ripped. He got jacked. He got new teeth and it actually doesn't work. But he's I trying mean, to be in movies and shit too, you know? Right. Yeah, And he's probably, or at least. Well, you know, he was become, in that movie, the one with Lapkus. Right. Um, he had a scene. Um, obviously I texted her to be like, how was it like working with Roman Reigns? She was like, he was cool. Yeah. Uh, like, like nice anytime guy. I see my friends with a wrestler, I immediately text them. Yeah. Um, not sure that helps me at all, or it's just a weird move, but it's going to keep happening. You go uh, full, full Matt Foley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Down, uh, in a van down by the river. But I, uh, no, but he was in that movie. So he, and he was in the, the, he's obviously very close with The Rock, who makes yeah. a ton of movies. He already put him in Hobbs and Shaw. So he's obviously going to make a – he also looks like a fucking movie star. He's in a Yeah, oh, he's a gorgeous man. And, yeah. and, and when I – like, the first time I, like, saw him in person and, and I've heard so much about his – um, just his personality. Like, right. I root for him, the guy. Joe. For Joe. Right. For, for, uh, and I, I want him to do well. So, like uh, – I was hopeful that these, this new look, this new shirt, this new mm -hmm. heel, this new uh, um, advocate, and the new teeth. Honestly, I was trying to be like, look, the new teeth, he's the big dog. He should, maybe he like, I was like, why didn't he just like get him a little bit less? It looks like he's got a mouth yeah, guard. Yeah. I'm like, maybe he got it done in Florida, Florida, bro. They're Florida teeth. I mean, yeah, he Florida got it done teeth. in Hollywood, Florida, not Hollywood, uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? He, Britt Baker did it. Like, yeah. he didn't get a <laughs> <laughs> I love that when a kayfabe world, Britt Baker does Roman Reigns uh, veneers. And he flew into Pittsburgh to get those done. I mean, there's no way he did yeah, they, no, didn't, honestly, they don't, they don't file done. them afterwards. Yeah, in Florida, look, let's be fucking real. I mean, in Florida, he probably went to Trump's guy or whatever. Like in Florida, that's what good-looking teeth look like. Big fucking exactly. pearly whites. Their yeah. camera, their they, they, and they play to the back. They play to the back of the uh, Coliseum, the Thunderdome. They play I'm, to the back of the Thunderdome. <laughs> play the very last screen. But I'm hoping that, like, I'm hoping that you know, 
this tra- tr- truly that this transition, even teeth wise, even like he talks a little funny, he owns it, he hones it. And then over time, we're like, we don't even remember, like, he'll look weird when we're like, oh, look how like small his teeth look in the shield. And, you know, oh, remember like how much we hated at best. Like, I am fine. It's, it's, it's like fine, yeah. but I'm just, I, the teeth is more of a reflection of heel Roman and like right. us accepting him and every new thing and every, like, I really want this to be Roman 2.0 in every single way. Right. That's what I was hopeful for, but I'm not going to be a wrestling fan that says like, oh, I'm so pissed. They say they blew it. Like, they, you know, this is a slow. No, they didn't blow it. I, as a matter of fact, a way I could tell that they didn't blow it is like cow fan, like uh, in the Facebook group, people are like, Want to buy his shirt? He oh, actually has a piece of his shirt. shirt he never had. Had. Right. Yeah. Uh, people want to buy that shirt. And also, I think that's why he wore the shirt. I actually don't think that shirt, uh, him wearing it last night because he joined the match at the end, I don't think that was indicative of his new gear. It's still a good chance he comes out in different gear. I think oh, they're yeah, pushing think the does. shirt. Yeah. They're like, why not win in that shirt? It's going to sell more of the shirts. You know what I mean? I think it was just as simple as that, you know? I was like, look, he already returned in the shirt. He did this. He went viral on SmackDown in the shirt. I mean, right. I get it. Ripped the shirt off at one point. I don't know. It's like. Oh, we he ripped left- it off and started fucking flexing and he looked. Ja- it would have been awesome. And like stunting and like, yeah, yeah, flexing on people like a different kind of flex, like a heel flex. It would be so rewarding. I, and it's not just because I want to see a jacked up dude, which, by the way, I definitely want to see a jacked up dude. I just. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I just I I wanted for the character. I really wanted to see full heel, full entrance. Like, what is it like with Roman, uh, uh, Roman and Heyman together? Um, right. And we'll, we're going to get a lot more of that. So I'm going to continue to watch. I'll see it on SmackDown. I'll yeah. see. You know, well, uh, look, he's there's going to be an adjustment period. I, I I point to Sami Zayn as the example. When he first went heel, he was really uncomfortable, and you saw it, Roman. You pointed it out. Um, on the Instagram uh, uh, live thread, but you were saying he uh, he didn't look that comfortable on Friday. You could see him look towards Paul and like kind of break a smile. Like he's not yeah. used to playing heel. He's never done it, you know. Yeah. And Sammy was like really awkward and weird about it. Now Sammy Zayn's like fully locked in heel, yeah. extremely comfortable in that role. And I believe Roman will get there, you know. Yeah. And I think this will work, especially with Heyman. Um, yeah. It's hard for him to break that mold. I mean, he's. He, you could see even like the way he's pensive in the locker room, like kind of staring down, like that's still, right. that's still face. That's still like a face thing to do. Right. It's more confident and healed to be staring down your boy, Adam Pierce, while Paul Heyman's talking like, right. That's exactly right. And so, and he'll get there. His eyes will shift. Everything will happen. Um, I am rooting for him. I just wanted to see a little bit more uh, of him in the match. I wanted it. And I wanted the entrance, but um, his music, yeah. Uh, is the same his music same which i knew because again heel heat like because he's a heel they're gonna keep a lot of it the same because you a lot of people hated this shit people hated the vest people hate hated that he took the shield music so why wouldn't he keep doing like he's gotta keep doing that stuff yeah i i mean depending on the theme i think i'd be more disappointed if they did change it for him there's a there's a danger that if you make him look too cool People will like him uh, because, to be honest, he was pretty fucking close to working. They just never put it together for him. I don't like to sell wrist guards and shit. He looked like a yeah. He looked like a weird. I don't know, like a a, a, like a militant Ghostbuster or whatever. They just give him uh, Rollins music or Bailey's music, which is the same. (laughs) Those two have the exact same song. That is yeah. so true. It's just like, oh, right? It's like a chord, 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 chord. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, but but that being said, just from a, a realm of positivity, uh-huh. part of the reason that I love professional wrestling is a lot of the shit that went down last night, you know? And that's yeah. what's cool, like where it's like, Two huge dudes superplex each other. The ring breaks. The other guy joins the match. Like that's yeah. why I don't. That's why I like wrestling. It's fucking theater. It's a blast. It's theater yeah. fighting, as opposed to just a, a a match. Now, would I have booked what they did? Probably not. But with the writing of of having Heyman going into those contracts for Roman, yeah, then then I think it's solid. But it really is. It is. It is frustrating to me when they're just going to kind of be like, yeah, whatever. You remember when Roman joined the match halfway uh, and then yeah. no one ever does it again? Right, right. I'm not thrilled about that. But ultimately, even looking at 
you know, Roman's Instagram and just the visual of him standing with the universal title with Heyman holding it and the contract label out, you're like, this is great. There's way more positives than negatives. Just like yes, awareness. Uh, my girlfriend's excited because I just got her into wrestling and I told her about WrestleMania 31. I showed her the cash in. And so oh. she knows Heyman, she knows Roman, she knows Rollins. Uh, and she's also seen a lot of the Dom Rollins stuff on Raw. Yeah. But, you know, when I was like explaining why payback, because she's like, wait, wasn't SummerSlam just last week? I was like, tonight's even bigger. And I explained the Roman's heel and she was like, wait, what? But you, oh. you were telling me he's an action figure. And I'm like, exactly. Yeah, do you think, that's actually, you just reminded me, so... Uh... Uh, uh, Lisa's getting the full. T she's gonna start watching when Roman's a heel, which is pretty interesting. But yeah. uh, do you think on Friday we get a successful promo from Reigns, uh, like explaining this move to join Heyman, or they just kind of make it, just let it go? Do you think they let? I guess the two things is: do they justify him joining with Heyman, and do and do they justify him? uh joining that match like that like signing the contract late um so part b no right i would love if they bought it back as we said earlier right but i think they're just gonna claim it right. um and it's just gonna be a cool moment right. in, in wrestling like in their mind in wwe's mind uh as far as him six having a successful promo with Heyman, by the way right uh i I guess we should both try to kind of book it in a way, then right. see if, if that lets our expectations down. Because um, I'll they acknowledge of, Brock. I'll settle for – they will or they won't? Do, do they? I mean, his contract's expired. I don't know yet. Maybe Paul makes a dig. Like, you know, right. it's like, you know, I don't think Roman's, you know, skilled enough on the mic to, like, do it in the way that, you know, instead of like calling him a punk bitch or something. Right, right, like, right. Oh, I need Paul to like shade him in the Paul Heyman way. But right. ain't, I don't know if they touch on that. My thing is like, just please make it not Roman. Like, because you all, you know, you yeah. like the Seth Rollins, like you never liked me. The typical heel, they did it with Ambrose. You never respected me, uh, fans. Like right. I tried and I did everything and now I had to be heel. And now I like it. It's like, please. <laughs> I want Do you think more. they tie in that everyone gave him shit for not showing up in COVID? Like, because that actually might work and it might be a nice nuance on that if he goes like, hey, like when I, I made a decision for my family, you all jumped down my throat and that's the moment I realized like I'm done with you. Like I, I'm done with you. I do this all for my family. I do what's best for me. It makes me more money. I sign with Paul Heyman. I give him 10%, but he makes me 40 times what I'm making before and that's all I care yeah. about. Yeah. They don't talk about money, which is a big problem in, in WWE. So that's why I don't think that that's going to happen. But I think that, like, I want to just make sure it's not too much, like, babyface justification while still maintaining continuity with this character. I right. just want that full 2.0, clear as day, this is why I don't care anymore. I hate – I'm, I'm here for blood, and I'm going to cheat, lie, and steal to get it, Eddie Guerrero. So, you know, something – like – yeah. Obviously not that, but like I don't know. I want to go. All right. So you said Eddie. Sasha wanted to show up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> Sasha no belts. Sa Sasha zero titles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, no. I, I think you're. I think you're. I think you're on something. I think. I think this will work. I think yeah. Roman will be in this heel zone. It's gonna. I think it will. It people will dig it, and then the fiend will go. They're, they'll push in baby face, you know, yeah. and it's pretty smart to have him have the title for six minutes, six days, <laughs> six minutes, six days, whatever, because people are going to be like, they fucked over the fiend and they'll make him more of a baby face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, the fiend, this gives the fiend longevity. You could tell he's, he's been pivoting a while. Um, he's gotten the quarantine uh, 20, just like all of us. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's looking big. 
<laughs> yeah, but the, the guy works. He's a monster. Who cares? You know. Yeah, um, he doesn't. He doesn't. I don't like he can him breathe he, through the mask and stuff. Yeah, you know, I, that's that's no. His work rate's still the same. I don't think he's slower. I think it helps him to be slower. I think, but I even mean just like sticking the tongue out through the mask. Mm-hmm. He's been doing a lot more of the mankind uh, close-ups with gig like laughter. Right. I think. Uh, I think that he's finding that zone, and then now that we're behind him, that'll just push him face anyway. And who knows what they do with Alexa? That could be fun. It's so I, fun to think of Fiend like doing that same entrance looking that scary but being a baby face because we cheer for him anyway and then they'll have alexa jo- i just think Strowman also should join up with fiend you know uh, interesting because uh, like Stro- where Strowman left here like he went into the, the lake of destiny um or whatever it was called but you know he threw him in that water the swamp came he came out yeah came- express yeah yeah now and, and and he's still it, it's not all put together he came back as like a monster but this it's like there's a camo vest yeah like roman pinned him Fiend pinned him. He's down on his luck. I feel like he would join back where he needs to get refocused. Why not go back to his old master? You know, a man who changed his, turned his situation around. I love that. I just don't think they're going to do that. I wish they would, but I think that just like, that's kind of always what they thought of for Strowman. Like they gave him the belt for a a minute. So they've given him, and it's the typical thing. It's the AJ Styles situation. You know, the whole go back down. Um, and, uh, and, and be a mid card, mid card title, uh, yeah. is the, not the U S title. Cause that's on raw, but intercontinental, maybe again, Sammy yeah, he Bain. had it for like four seconds, right? Before yeah. like, I don't even remember I don't what he like seeing a giant like that in the IC picture, but no. it's, no, I don't it's like just, I think they're going to push him out of the main event scene. I, I, I wonder, and I wonder when they're going to bring big E toward Roman. I think they're going to do that. You think I'll do that pretty fast? Well, he had a big win over Sheamus on uh, Payback, so like they're clearly pushed, giving him his 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 push. You know, well they're okay, so they're giving a lot of people like obvious pushes. Matt right. Riddle in a in a in a not as main event way, he's too young in his career. Right. Um. Uh. Keith Lee as like he will go against someone during Mania. Right. Uh, big E, which they're clearly like they've even said we're pushing him finally, and now that his brothers are on ice he gets to really do that so i'm just hoping that that is realized uh and i hope that it's realized in a in a way kind of like kofi's where it really has a payoff at mania and and against a heel roman could be cool unless yeah unless they do unless they do that elsewhere with biggie uh maybe on a different brand but i think a heel roman versus babyface brock is the fight we never knew we wanted Heel Roman versus babyface Brock. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think For mania. Maybe, I'm, I'm sorry. We were going mania. I was like, mania. no, you, you, you hit on my next point, which is that we're a hundred percent seeing another Brock Roman mania. No question. Oh, and by the way, and maybe not now, but this no, year, my but- girlfriend who's in it literally was like, wow, that's some big schnur energy. Uh, Paul Heyman going straight from, uh, from, from, uh, Brock to Roman. <laughs> She's like, Brock's definitely going to come back. And like, I was like, well, they're not going to do that now. It's yeah. like, she's like she, but that's like Mr. Steal Your Heyman, you know? And, right. uh, and so Baby I wonder how. Brock, Roman, oh, yeah. that's so interesting. Think about, uh, think about like an October Halloween world where we have a baby face fiend with right. Roman and, and a heel Roman, a big bad one. Hopefully there's a Big E something, although I want Big E to win. So I maybe I want to get him away from Roman. Because I think the bigger blockbuster box office for main event, I can't believe it. It's Roman Brock again, but it's babyface Brock. Reverse roles. Yeah. Yeah, Is that their fourth time going at Mania? Well, if you have Brock disappear until the Rumble and then win the Rumble, you know, you have Brock win the Rumble, that would work. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have him do what he did. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, and then don't like just keep it on the wraps that he resigned. Have him show up thirty and just throw everyone out very fast, very easily. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on. But Brock apparently is a full-on free agent. Like, you know, no chance he goes to AEW. There's just there's zero chance that's happening. I don't think so. I think he's a Vince guy through and through. He's uh, definitely a Vince guy through and through. But it is interesting because he those cons money. have a lot of money. You yeah, know? he loves money. The, Tony think, Khan has a lot. Uh, the, the Khan family have more money than Vince, you know? The thing is <laughs> and if, if Brock they decide to just to... give Brock whatever, like there's a price, as I'm saying. Well, I think, <laughs> I think, I don't actually think Brock works for AEW. I think he's too big. Like, Way I too, think he makes everyone look so you can, small. 
And let me tell you something. He will have such an ego about booking. They will never, they can have the entire Lucha Express. They could have every, yeah. uh, uh, every big guy they have on stockpiled on top of him to cover him for a three count and he'll kick out. He will never get pinned. And so that's a big problem. Right. They don't, they don't have any, they, like the only guys who could wrestle him are like Lance Archer and like Brian Cage, right? Yeah, that's who I was thinking. But and I like think maybe Boxley because you could maybe sell that. But he doesn't even respect them as a performer, as we've seen in their Romania match. Of course, it's a different time and it's a different mox. Right. But, uh, but you know, a Mania match against Gene Ambrose isn't the same as All Out against John Moxley in like a death match. But yeah. But I just don't know if Brock. I don't. I, it's I don't, so interesting because Brock. Brock like ruins. It's kind of interesting. Brock kind of like ruins AEW's kayfabe. Like a guy the, like Adam Cole slots right in. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the size there, like they're playing in a different, when you bring in Brock, you start like, you, you start really diminishing this, the size of these guys, you know, it, it, it kind of matters. Yeah. You know? When you're watching. Yeah. It's like UFC. It's like, you know, when you're watching a George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva type, like age, like, like range of motion. And, right. and then when you're watching, you know, Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir or something like that, or big country Roy Nelson, it's just bigger dudes. It's a different type of fighting right. style. I mean, of course, there's Seth Rollins. There's every every weight um, in, 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 in the WWE. It's just their right. big guys don't measure up. No, no. Look man. what Luke Harper looks. I mean, look what Brody Lee just looks massive. He's he so looks tall. huge in there. I mean, he is a huge guy, he, by the way. He was, a, he was a bludgeon brother. I mean, he was a big guy in yeah, WWE. He's one of the bludgeon brothers. Do we see yeah. Rowan signed with AEW? <laughs> and yeah, the I, spider. Do they sign the spider? Do they yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So it's it's like the thing. The thing is that just 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 to sum up the Roman conversation, I think this is one of those things where, like, if someone says to me, like I was saying, I was texting with Rosenberg, and he was like, "I loved it, top to bottom." I completely understand that. You know he what I mean? There in the spirit of it, he sits at the desk. Everyone's excited. Oh, he was there. Well, he did the pre-show. Oh, he was doing the pre-show. I didn't. I didn't see the pre-show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Looks like and, a million bucks. I mean, you know, he, so it's different when you're in the building. And then yeah, the, everything's you know. good in the building. I don't even remember what that's like to be in the building. I don't know. I don't I've know. never, I've never got to see Fiend enter yet. Like I've, I've, been, I've never been around Fiend. Have you? I think we were at that Raw. Were we not? We were at Raw, but he was, he was on SmackDown at that time. I oh, think. you know what? Did I see him at a house show? I don't remember. I can't tell you actually, which is sad. So probably not. Yeah, man, I would love to go in the sneak into that Thunderdome and watch uh, the Fiend enter with the teeth on the ceiling. It looks fucking amazing. Oh yeah, I, I, I yeah. Well, I guess I what I'm saying make, is that... I might be making an appearance in the Thunderdome. By the way, really? Yeah, that's not yeah. a prediction. By the way, that's spoiler. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No more, Mister Nice Chew. Um, are they gonna? Are they doing like a celebrity wing? <laughs> I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Imagine they give you second row. In the Thunderdome. <laughs> and you're like, man, my star is falling. I'm getting the yeah. second row in the fucking Thunderdome. I'm next to the KKK guy and the murder yeah. video. I'm next to the KKK guy. <laughs> I'm behind John Oliver's kid. What the hell? Yeah. There was, you know what I took a picture of? I couldn't, uh, I don't know if I got a good shot of it. It won't be good over this, but uh, there was a woman who had two seats, right? So it was the same. She had she was in the front row and then like the fifth row. But it was the same video clearly. So she would move and you'd see. It. And it was like she they gave her two seats. I was like, that's a funny troll. Like she's not doing yeah. anything wrong. She's just taking up two seats. I mean, there's, there's definitely like more more interest in watching the crowd. I heard didn't Kenny Omega apparently go on? <laughs> yeah, there? Kenny Kenny Omega was in the Thunderdome. <laughs> it's the best booking of his entire year. Yeah, that's right. He finally went to WWE. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the Thunderdome does look awesome, though. I really, I think, I love looking at it. I think it's so cool. It I'll is. I what. said it's white trash, black mirror is what I call it. <laughs> it's totally white trash, black mirror. I, I, yeah, it's not as refined as everything you see on Black Mirror, but I, <laughs> I like even, even just like the screens. But I, I, um, you know, I've really big been a huge AEW guy during this quarantine and and during uh you know, what I like to call a North Korea WWE when it was just at the Performance Center. It just looks so <laughs> odd. Man. A single fan? Yeah, just this, it was just... so creepy and a different type of Black Mirror. Like an even, right. I don't even know what you'd call it. 
Um, so it was, it was wearing on me after I was like getting depressing. So, you know, I really love AEW's aesthetic. I love their set. I love the indoor outdoor. I love the talent sitting in the, uh, in the audience, but not like Bugenhagen on a hockey board. It's like, <laughs> it's like MJF delivering a promo from the crowd. You know, I love it. Yeah. Um, and then when they really kind of blew my mind uh, with the Thunderdome. Gabba, gabba, we gabba, gabba. Yeah. I was, uh, I was, it was not tough to go back to AEW, but then all of a sudden it was like, okay. No, this, AEW uh, looked drank. After you saw the Thunderdome, it reminded you when you saw Orton and the fucking Drizzle Pyro. I said it, the moment, uh, the moment you saw Randy Orton and Drew face to face, right, in the Thunderdome, and you're like, this is just undies, knee pads, <laughs> boots, right? Two men. On these knee pads, boots, right? Like the more, more pleatherette uh, <laughs> than anyone else. You know what I mean? And you're like, you're like, you're like, yo, this this is what AEW. This is what WWE does. That doesn't t diminish AEW, but it did remind you who's who's boss a little. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. I cannot believe that Vince let that go on for so long. Yeah. He, the single, he gave them six months of single fan, better ratings, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think uh, it was because it just took a minute to get all this together. Yeah, I know? mean, and it looks great. Like, it's a, sure. it's a fucking, it's, it's, I don't know why it's called the Thunderdome, but it's like, it's fuck. it looks I awesome. It, I think it's kind of that, like, I, they always just take IP that's available. Right. And I think there's, but I also think there's like, WCW Thunder was a thing. Right, right. You know, and it, it, does, it does have a dome. It does have a dome. Yeah. And they, and it's got a that. gladiator's dome. It works. I love it. I think it's yeah. like, I like. I think it's a name that like we would workshop on the podcast and we'd be like, but they never choose yeah. Thunderdome. And they did. And I was like, good, good for you. WWE. Yeah. You know, I was excited about it. The only thing it's missing is like that full on gladiator, like Vince, like up in the king spot. Being like, <laughs> next match. You know what I mean? I would love if they incorporated just a little bit more of that kayfabe, like, backstage. Like, making yeah. it like a real. They got to be getting close to, like, doing the, like, a little bit of the, like, um, who wants to be a millionaire. Where, like, they start pulling the crowd and shit. Right. right? Like, right, make right. it full digital. It'll be right. awesome. Yeah, I think we got we got at least till the end of the year. So maybe, yeah, maybe I think it's going to get better and better. Do they have the Amway Center for much longer? Cyber, Cyber Sunday. Um, I don't know. What is the Amway Center? Is that where the Magic play? Yes. I wish we had. So where's a, the NBA? Aren't they in the, where's that bubble? Where's the NBA Orlando. bubble? They're like in a Disneyland complex type of, not Disneyland, uh, Disney, Disney Resort. World. Right. Um, got it. Got it. Because I was like, are they sharing that? Because the Orlando, no. all right. They're doing a full Disney thing. No, they're just, they just taken an arena, you know, right. taking seats out or covered it or, you know, whatever Chad Brown and his crew did. And then right, right, right. spent a billion dollars on, uh, you know, LED technology and, uh, you know. It's and, fucking great. It's yeah, great. Yeah, just it's Orton great. with the fucking drizzle pyro and then Drew's pyro is from, you know, the, from the seats. Sometimes the seats are screens. Sometimes they're fans. It, yeah. It's great. It, yeah, I know. I mean, that, it's, not, it's not as good, obviously. It's just no, but, it's, there, but this is this is we 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 have we must be impressed by that. And I know that this is a uh, a Roman podcast, mostly you know, oh, and yeah, other yeah. things that, frankly, I, I'd like to see. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, but Roman uh, is always here. Yeah, but when you talk about Roman, uh, excuse me, when you talk about Randy Orton with the drizzled pyro, yeah. Who, by the way, you talk about John Cena being the prototype. Randy Orton's the prototype, and um, yeah. Well, John, they're, they're two sides of the two, two sides yeah. of the same co of the different coins or whatever. Exactly you know what I mean? right. right. One's Maybe heads and one's tails. One's fucking the PR track. make a win. Yeah. Or, Orton's like the new like flair or whatever. If you want, That's, if you want to yeah. say right, and then seen as the new Hogan. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's, I don't know if it totally tracks, but it's good enough. Yeah, of course, it doesn't. Of course, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Just like Ric Flair's kind of work rate and, and stamina. Right. Is, but I don't know. I mean, Randy is just an. I like that he's even a little leaner than he was, but still not skinny Orton. Right. I, I just I love him. Which is, by the way, uh, we haven't seen. I don't really think like an RKO or a Claymore for, from either one of them towards the other right. one. Really. Right. 
you know, we've gotten some backslide. Wasn't that the backslide roll up or something? Yeah, there's there's yeah. a backslide. Which, by the way, that was my booking. I thought Keith should have beat Orton with the backslide. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, like if Orton has this weakness of the backslide. I think it's so fucking so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> that's great. Even Riddle beats him with a backslide. So I was just like, man. I mean, I know, I know. This is really less about Orton and more about like you know we're putting Keith Lee yeah. over and he's beating Randy Orton on a pay per view. Um, you know, um, but like Cena beat an angle or whatever. Well, I don't actually think Cena beat an angle or whatever it was. Um, this is all to say that, um, no, angle beat. You're talking champion. about his debut match, you're talking exactly. about exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, Cena, Cena lost, but it right, put, right, put up a great it, fight, right? So, yeah, but anyway, so it doesn't, of course, that's not a good analogy, but um, at Clash of Champions. Where at some point, since they're obviously keeping this McIntyre, is that the next pay per view Clash of Champions? Mm-hmm. Okay. September twenty seventh, I believe. Okay. Okay. So we got a minute. Um, do you think Randy Orton's going to be champion? It's interesting. I I I I think that I think there's a chance they ride Drew out pretty far, but the problem is. If they want to do Brock Drew again, right? Yeah, he's got to keep it for a year. I don't know what's up with Brock, and then I just feel like Brock Reigns is going to be where Vince can't control himself with the Brock Reigns thing. No, it's it's written in now. You can't right. not acknowledge it. You can't have like Brock just be back as a heel to go against face McIntyre without Heyman, or yeah. maybe Heyman has both. I mean, that could be. I don't like that actually. I yeah. think Heyman. I like honestly, the way I see it is. You know, Brock, Brock Reigns is what I would like to see, right. so I, I would book according to that plan. And I and I wonder if Heyman gets involved in the match, and maybe actually they turn Reigns fairly face in that match because Heyman turns on Reigns, and it shows that it was always Brock the whole time. Ooh. I don't know. There's something, something there. Anyway, I don't want to. Uh, I think give... eventually we do get there. Eventually we get Heyman yeah. back with Brock, and and then we get Reigns back in that babyface role. Especially if we start seeing. It's going to depend on his – they're going to compare his merch is going to be the big thing, you know? I know it sounds crazy, and I don't know if I'm just, like, short-sighted right now, even though it sounds really long-sighted, right. the word. I wonder if they do – I don't know if it would make it five Reigns uh, Brock matches with this next Mania. You know, they do that. And if they carry their characters and Brock's a true part-timer and they actually do it and then at the next Mania, that's when Heyman actually turns and we right. get – face Roman after seeing him a heel for a year and a half being like, Oh my God, we're ready. This is it. I wonder. But anyway, with that crazy long-term plan that a lot of people may not like, um, I, I just think that McIntyre uh, could, yeah. Drop I think it they eventually, I, I think this will, this will, I think this is a perfect, I think this is going to help your argument here. I think that one of the, you're saying, could Randy be champion again? I think we see Randy Cena again for that 16 title yeah. spot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think that's going to be a huge mania event like of like they both at 16. Who's going to be 17? You know what I mean? So, so yeah, that being I said, Randy actually, needs two more wins to tie, and he's definitely going to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and think then I think Randy's you have Flair involved in that. Him? What's up? You think Randy would go over Cena for that, for that to happen? Mm, was, I don't think so. I think Cena, so Cena goes this. over Randy at mania. Yeah, but I think that what I'm saying is that you said, will Randy get the title again? I think they have to – they got to start throwing titles on him to get – he needs two more – I think he's at 14 right now, so I think he needs two more wins, you know? Right, right, right. Uh, but so I, he needs yeah. two more wins. But I also think they need to start – like Drew, they need to really get behind Drew because they need to push these younger talents. So what I think they're going to do is add Drew, and they're going to add Keith into this, and then they might do a triple threat and have Randy – pin he owes a pin to keith For so sure. drew can lose the title by randy pinning keith you right. know what i'm saying so 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 i i i think that it is very possible they give randy the title again especially because just to switch it up and you know and then either big e or cena wins the rumble depending on if they're going to do big e versus orton at mania or in which case you could even have Biggie go over because then Orton's one closer to next mania. I'm yeah. weirdly booking for that, not this coming mania for 37, yeah. but 38. But I'm saying in that mania, then you have right. you have Brock Reigns five, I think, or four, I'm not sure, but either way. Four. four at that point. And They've then done three already, right? They've done they did thirty one. So I'm saying five. Thirty four. Uh-huh. No, they've only done two, right? 
Okay. Then two okay. manias. Two manias. Two manias. They've, okay. They've done Summer Slams and shit. So their third mania would be this coming year, which we'd get a very satisfying, you know, face Brock versus heel Roman. And then the following year, we get something similar, but just the booking's different. How we get there is very different. And that's when Paul actually turns um, in a very cool, hopefully clever way. And then that same mania, due to this same long term booking, we have Randy Orton going against Cena for the record. And this year, you do. Uh, Big E winning the Rumble and challenging actually Randy Orton, switching brands, which will right. help that fast lane, that, that like, you know, road to WrestleMania for him. And then, you know, Brock doesn't enter the Rumble since he had such an amazing Rumble this time. And maybe he even comes back at fast lane or he, or he something. What if he wins money in the bank? I don't know when that is. Did we already get past? Oh, Otis has it. I was, oh, he's no, already had it. That's going to be just a goof cash in. Like he's not winning the title. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless he, like, pins Orton and then Orton wins it back the next night and then it's – you're in your Or record. he uses it for the IC title, like, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or NXT title or something. Ooh, you know what I mean? what he'll do. Yeah. Otis winning the NXT title might be kind of fun, right? Uh, uh, yeah, except they're just doing lunch boxes with him now. It's very New Day at Jace. I mean, they're really right. – they're keeping it fun and commercial with Otis, as they should. Right. But yeah. I think for us, yeah, I think he'd have a great – I think just as a wrestler and look-wise, I think it would be really cool if he cashed it in against whoever this Fatal 4-Way winner is now hopefully a heel. And right. then, you know, he could actually be a singles competitor at NXT going against Finn for some reason. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I don't – I mean, I don't, I don't know what the plan is there, but I, 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 I'm down for it. But it is interesting to go back to your point. You are planning for the next Mania after this. It's not that stupid to do because we don't know what this next Mania is going to look like in terms of seats. Right? I, my guess is there will be fans there. It'll be at some percentage of capacity. There's yeah. no chance they're skipping Mania again or doing it. So if we already have people doing outdoor stuff. They'll do whatever outdoor thing they got to do. They got to go 25%, whatever. But Mania will happen. You know what I mean? And uh, probably in the state of Florida, if they can't make it happen in L.A., you know what I mean, where everything seems to be going down or, uh, yeah. We could have a vaccine in January. You don't know that. Or they might do, like, some kind of split thunder. Even if they have the vaccine, it won't be – You, I don't think it's – No, 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 I'm saying – By but the that time Mania runs like, we won't no, be in the clear, you know? No, 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 no. We're not, no. Us as a nation and world, world is not going to be in the clear. Right, but right. We'll be way further along in, in this integration. Who knows if it's more 30% and maybe it does still happen in California because every the, 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 the nation has flattened the curve to some degree as a whole. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? It's just fun to talk about wrestling. This is the first time we talked about the pandemic. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, it was fun to just talk about wrestling, but then what you actually think about because when we talk, when we it starts getting real, we talk mania because we're always trying to touch down. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're uh, we're, somewhere. I mean, this is the first, you know, this was a devastating blow for all of us. We all had our tickets to Tampa booked and we didn't get to go. Yeah, and so if we, to, to think that, to think that, not only do you think that this happened from WrestleMania. Then SummerSlam we missed also, and then we're going to miss another Mania. It's just a devastating uh, acknowledgement. But regardless, Vince won't let that happen. He'll do it as outside as he needs to with as many people as he needs to. Like, you know, main, they're not going to lose out all that money on Mania again. So we'll see what it is. But, yeah, thinking about the big Mania will probably be the 2022 Mania will probably be – hopefully that will be full crowd, over 100,000 people at Mania, you know? Yeah. Probably still in Florida for some reason. I mean, yeah, Florida is the place to do it. But anyway, hey, all right. I mean, Skyler, I think we not only covered the Roman Reigns thing, we covered the gamut. Yeah. A lot of food for thought. A lot of the future of wrestling. We really took it into where do we go? How do we How do we uh, move into the – how does WWE move into the next generation now that they've, they've solved their technical difficulties in this time? How do they make – these new stars, but also keep people interested, especially when a guy like Randy is the guy who's fucking killing it, <laughs> killing it most. I think we'll he's. See. I mean, I, in many ways, he's twenty twenty the number one wrestler. I know they gave it to Mox, but I don't know. Oh, the PWI, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was number two? Did you see? I didn't look at the list. I, only I didn't look at it. It's probably like Okada or something. Uh, <laughs> th- those lists are never like. They, no, they, they always like, shortchange the WWE guys, you know, because it's like cool. It's like pitchforky or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, box is the number one. I, yeah, I mean, I think Roman, 
Number one wrestler of 2020 is hands down Randy Orton for me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just ate two pins on two pay-per-views. He did the favor. He's going over at Clash yeah. of Champions. <laughs> um, I, I, hands down, I'd say either it could be Orton. I, I would accept Cody as an answer. Um, yeah. I, I guess I could accept Moxley. It's just, it, yeah. it's, you know, I like Moxley, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I like what he's doing. But, yeah, I don't know. Me too. But it's kind of apples to oranges. I mean, look, he's AEWs. I know it's all of wrestling, but it's a little bit different circumstances. I mean, we're talking, we're talking mania main event or right. Randy Orton. You know, it's it's a little different. Last topic. Last yeah. topic. Because this is the thing I've been swirling is, don't you think Miz is the perfect answer to MJF? Like, if I'm WWE, I start just, I start just letting Miz do his thing. You know. One of the best stick men in there. Right. Um, he's not as good as a face. No. And, and he's also, he's just, he also like, he's really steps up to the plate when you, when you allow him to matter. You know what I mean? So like he, if they could book him, cause you could have a killer. Let's see. Reigns is a heel now, so it doesn't really work, you know, but mm-hmm. like a few, like, you know, whenever those two get together, it's good. You know what I mean? But like yeah. if you had, Miz going after Drew McIntyre. That would be a fucking good time. I just think they need to, like, let heel Miz run wild. Yeah. and I Especially don't know. in the Thunderdome, you know? Yeah. I'd like to see, you know, he's such an adapter. And I feel like watching now what Roman's doing, it would be cool if we got, like, a batter. Like, like yeah, more of an MJF, tur- MJF turned up Miz. Less yeah. of uh, the A-lister. Um, not the Naruto gimmick either. More like, like kind of Jericho with the scarf a little bit, but not as silly. Um, I think he could also blur the the work shoot lines. Like yeah. he can answer that where it's like the whole like you know MJF's doing the thing about like looking up at the lights and stuff like that. Yep. Like Miz always, he always whenever you get Miz in the work shoot thing, even that stuff with Big E was That's like right. a bad look for him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and and so? whatever. It's it maybe too controversial to even tie into this, but like, there's just something about Miz when you just let him blur those lines that he gets he gets that heel heat because he's kind of naturally has it. You know? Yeah. Well, it's why the Daniel Bryan things uh, was helpful, and he's also uh, was great and 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 a blood feud. But also, like, I think that the Miz, the Miz has been here for how many years now? Over twelve. Oh, I mean. Let me see. I might be able to look this up. Yeah. Do we have Do we have that stat? Uh, we don't have like a stat guy here. Oh yeah. Let's see. We don't have any stats. Well. Um. Oh, actually, what's this? I have been here for twelve years. <laughs> oh yeah. So we didn't even have to look it up. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, we like, heard it right. <laughs> he's <laughs> been. <is> yeah. Great. <laughs> so he's been. He's been exactly. But 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 that's the thing. He knows that he knows how to press everyone's buttons in the locker room. Oh my god. And, Sorry. I just think. Moving Miz to NXT is such a fucking amazing move. Can you imagine Miz? He would, lo- he would lord over NXT. Destroying these guys on the microphone. Just being like, you are a little shrimp. What is your deal? You look like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? And, and I think during this time where Karrion Cross is hurt, it's a little bit like everyone's already been a champion. I mean, we haven't seen fully, like, we definitely haven't seen like Finn with the NXT title, obviously since you know the in his, in his beginning of his career. But like, right. I wonder if heel Finn versus face, not but like but like NXT face Miz right. actually is something for like the WrestleMania takeover. I, I would really and let Morrison do his own thing on a different brand, literally. Right. Um, and it would it would be and I mean no one would do that that gimmick better than Miz. I don't even think he would see it as like a call down. I don't think it's that anymore. I yeah, think he it, needs to grow his hair. We need Nazi Miz back. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the full on fucking Fuhrer? He had that full on yeah. Nazi hair for a while. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, it was great. Yeah, it was. Tr- I, you know. Yeah, frankly, it made me uncomfortable. It only makes me uncomfortable because I always wish I had straight hair, and I'm like, God, that's cool. I know, me too. That, I think that's what it is. I, it, Miz, I, I get jealous of those just, like, people's hair who look like it, like, just does whatever they want. Yeah, it's you know straight. I mean? so you just put it – I mean, they always complain that it doesn't have volume or it doesn't – like, it can't do <laughs> no. more than the one thing, but we're like, all we want is the luscious lock. No, those dude. are the guys who, like, they got a haircut, 
like when we were, like when I was like twelve, they just get like a haircut that was like perfectly spiked, like yeah. Bart Simpson style. And yeah. you're like, mine's fucking curling, and I'm like, yeah. what the yeah. fuck is this? I'm putting that in? deadhead shit. Yeah, that stick. Yeah. I'm just trying to not look Jewish. Yeah. And... <laughs> I'm folding my my curly hairs like behind the other one and trying to make it stick up, kind of twist it a I little. Know. I know, I know, but it makes it better when your hair starts falling out. It makes it easier when it's just a fucking curly mess. Oh, you know I, mean? I have I have grown into my Jewish hair. I actually like my curly. I love it now. Isn't that yes, interesting? Yeah, I me actually too. love it now. When I was yeah. younger, I hated it, and now I like think it has fun character. It goes like crazy, and I dig it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that is uh, that's a similar trajectory. What do you know? All right, Skyler, I have to pee, and I think we've covered it all. I think we shocked the system. Shocked the system. Uh, but hopefully we'll uh, hear from you more. Uh, yeah. up, well, now you're in the couve. You're probably going to be deep in the wrestling zone. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a little tough to watch, but oh. uh, the non-network stuff is tough to watch oh. here. Um, well, oh, right, right. There's no right. Hulu. Just watch- There's no Hulu. Um, it's a little oh. tough. All the apps don't work. They're not compatible. Even oh. Canadian apps. I can't download Canadian apps. It was tough. But I was just thinking when, you sit, getting, like, when you're sitting waiting to shoot. It's yeah. like throw on raw and then, you know, well, that's all I want to do. So I need to figure out a way. So maybe if a nose could, could like help, help us out there or something, maybe we'll try to find you a rig or something. We'll find you a yeah. rig. We'll, we'll get you hooked up to the main feed. Yeah. Um, Skylar, thanks for stopping by. Um, well, uh, uh, had to, this, thanks for being a good sport. I had to talk about this shit, even though I know where I record tomorrow, it had to be talked about. Yeah. But this is, you know, cow underground. This is cow underground. Oh, yeah, this is the Cal Underground uh, where we, uh, frankly, talk about the things that uh, we want to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Roman right. Reigns, Randy Orton, Keith Lee, and, frankly, some other stuff I'd like to see. Yes. And, by the way, everybody, uh, support the pod, patreon.com slash comedians wrestling. We're putting out tons of bonus content right now because we're loving wrestling and we're loving life. So support us uh, and we'll love you. That's uh, all I have to say. Skyler, thank you for stopping by. My pleasure. Keep watching wrestling. Kisses. Kisses.